That's so okay. <laughs> it is a great organization that uh, is doing an awesome thing, I believe. Um, but tell me a bit about you know, the mission of, of Paws of the North. Yeah, for sure. So we are a new rescue, um, Muskoka based, uh, but our, basically our initiatives and missions are in Northern Ontario. So mm -hmm. working with the First Nation communities in those areas, which are very isolated, um, have either none or lack thereof of veterinary care. So mm -hmm. the animals that are up there just don't get the same sort of attention and medication supplies that they would regularly need, um, which leads to overpopulation, some disease and sicknesses, that sort of thing. Uh, so we, our mission is to obviously help and assistance with dogs that need to be rehomed, mm -hmm. um, but also we're initiating different spay and neuter programs, wellness clinics, uh, just being able to get the help up there that these communities need in order to yeah, en enjoy their pets and their pets' lives. And then those that need to have dogs bring down, we can do that too and find them great forever homes. This is an interesting thing for you to get into. You mentioned to me before you're from BC and I'm wondering if maybe <laughs> that has ties to how you got into this because I'm familiar with the BC Rescue Program as well. Mm -hmm. um, is that something or is this something completely separate? Like how did, how did you get involved <laughs> in something like this? Uh, I am actually, I'm born in, or not, I'm from Ontario originally. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Muskoka, but uh, we moved out to British Columbia a few years back and I did get involved with the rescue there. Mm -hmm. uh, where I lived was very close to a First Nations uh, community and assisted in sort of rescue work there. And upon returning back to Ontario, it's just been something that I have been completely dedicated to. It's my passion. And uh, I worked with uh, Musini Puppy Rescue for a little bit this past year and mm -hmm. decided that now's the time to really brand off and do what I'm supposed to do and, and kind of create my own mission with it and just kind of leap into it all. <laughs> so break this down a bit more for me. You know, what is your, I guess, what is your goal in terms of helping how many dogs, you know, are you bringing more down here? What, what overall can you be doing here, I guess? What, what is your overall goal? Well, there's never really a definitive number of how many dogs we're going to assist, mm -hmm. and um, I can't do it alone, so it, we are a foster-based rescue. Mm -hmm. We don't have a shelter physical location, so the number of dogs that I'm able to help and bring out is always going to be determined by how many foster families I have available. So whether they're already filled or I just don't have enough of a network, which we're hoping to really build right now, that's going to be the determining factor as to how many dogs we can help at a time and supplies and funding are also going to contribute to it because every dog that comes down usually has a like plane ticket mm -hmm. <laughs> that we have to pay for uh, veterinary costs for each of them obviously we're dedicated to spaying and neutering as well for any dogs that we rehome uh, so all those factors kind of go into play so if we're keeping well with obviously donations and fosters and we'll just keep bringing dogs down that we can are you are you kind of specifically looking into Muskoka for rehoming or are you keeping a pretty wide base in that sense? A wide base to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, we do really focus on the home visits and bringing the dogs into the home to meet the family, mm -hmm. your potential family, seeing how they interact. It's up to the dog or puppy to choose. Okay. And we're there to speak for them, but they're going to tell us if they're ready to be a part of that family sort of thing. So we do keep it within a bit of a distance. We usually say about a two hour radius um, so that it's, it's easy for myself and volunteers if we are doing that home visit that we're not traveling across the province and, yes, and that, yeah. <laughs> that adds up in time and as well yeah. um, it costs too. So I mean, I'm sure there'll be situations where somebody in, I don't know, Quebec or Nova, you know, Nova Scotia or whatever, mm -hmm. they might see a dog and think, I really want to rescue this dog. And, mm -hmm. and that could be a sort of extenuating circumstance, right? Exactly, yeah. Every every scenario is, is very independent. You put policies in place, but at the end of the day, if the perfect matches this certain home, then we're mm -hmm. going to go to the extent that it, it needs to be to make that happen. Fantastic. So let's yeah. talk about how people can get involved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, with any kind of rescue work, um, it, it comes down to if you can't adopt, foster. If you can't foster, donate. If mm -hmm. you can't donate, share. Uh, so we're, as I said, like obviously we want people to look at rescues to adopt first over shopping for dogs. Mm -hmm. um, that's obviously a time and financial commitment. So if that's not feasible for people and they want to still have a dog come into their home, fostering is an amazing start for that. We take care of all expenses. All that's required is that the dog gets to stay in your home. Mm -hmm. Obviously help us with maybe some training things that they need to be working on. 
and then we obviously get them adopted. Uh, if that's not possible for someone, we're always looking for donations, whether it's monetary or supplies. We have a Amazon wish list that we have on our Facebook page and cool. website. So okay, good idea. I have actually heard that before. That's really smart. <laughs> um, obviously, we support local stores first, but there are people who support us from other spots. So whether even they purchase from a local pet store and send up, or they uh, use the Amazon wish list, either is a great resource and um, or just donations of things that they might have at home lying around from a past pet or are looking to get rid of um, we'll, we're always open to, to accepting things <laughs> so um you are, I'm assuming you haven't had a first round of dogs come down yet. Is that right? Or you have? Oh, we have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm behind the ball here. So yeah, it happened quickly. <laughs> okay. When did it happen? Um, so that was kind of the thing. As I, I'm still, very, I'm still working with Musini Puppy Rescue. I've got 17 dogs in my care there right now. That wow. Okay. I'm finding homes for, but um, rescue work doesn't stop, and it's something that you learn to adapt all the time. And mm -hmm. I had a timeline in place of where I was kind of hoping to start, but. The dogs are in need, so uh, we have three dogs already in our care. Okay. Uh, two are coming down um, from actually Muskrat Falls today, so the weather has been a little bit difficult in getting them in, but uh, they're on their way down now, so that's wonderful. And Great. The calls and, and emails keep, keep coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna get more and more dogs over yeah. time, right? I mean, it's just gonna build into a, a Ex big snowball, but a good exactly. one, right? Exactly. Very much so. <laughs> well, that's great. So, how can people find you? Uh, yeah, so we, we do have our website, which is pawsinthenorthrescue.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on social media, Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Um, we will post out different things if we need assistance with anything um, about our dogs, any events, fundraising things we've got going on. We have a few different that we're hoping to sort of get in the works over the next couple months. Mm -hmm. uh, one in particular will be the big gala event uh, come closer to Christmas of this okay. year, okay. which should be pretty fun. Um, and yeah, that's through that is the easiest way to kind of see what we're doing, what going on through social media or our website.